So, I'm back again, your adventure artist, AJ Moore, and today I'm down in the grass, real low to the ground, because I'm looking for ants. And there's a lot of different types, some sugar ants just right here. A little tiny little mound, so we're gonna be finding ants today. So join me on this adventure, and it's gonna be a lot of ants, because it's nature, y'all. See you out there. Welcome back, adventurers. It is yours truly, your narrator. And it appears as though our adventurer is closely following a trail of some rather busybody's aunts. We'll just have to see where this leads him. Look at this. Look at this. I don't want to step on them. Check this out. What we got here is a whole colony of Texas red ants, Texas. or they're also known as the red harvester ant. Red harvester. This is the colony right here. This is the nest, which is normally in a, in a spread it out area, just an empty area that they clear out, uh, which is about maybe a meter or so sometime, a little bit smaller, give or take. And these are foraging ants. Now you might be wondering like, man, AJ, you're gonna get bit. Why are you standing in a nest of ants? They don't care about me. They are not interested in chocolate today. They only care about seeds. They like seeds. They go around and they forage for seeds, all types of plants around here. And they bring it back to this colony and they store it in a granary. You know, like you got canned goods in your pantry. They have a pantry down there. This things go about maybe three to five meters deep. And there's thousands of ants. These ants, they have a way of communicating uh, to where they know how to find their way back here because they can get up to 50 meters away from here. That is far for a tiny little ant. Sometimes I see them carrying red harvester ants. Maybe they had died in battle or something, but they carry in those ants away from the colony. Bye, Felicia. When one of the red harvester ants die, his body releases some type of chemical and it's not good for the colony. So any one of them that dies inside the colony, they take him out and they bury him. They you know like, pull out some seeds for your homies, yo. All right, I'm gonna try to get out of here without stepping on any of them. So let's move. Ooh. Whoa. Ah. Okay. Aha, uh -huh. here it is, it's another colony. <laughs> a smaller one though. I don't know, is it smaller just because it has less ants in it? Or is it a brand new colony? Well, new as in the last few weeks. Let's move on. Uh-huh, another one. Look how far that was. Trails leading all the way here. And it looks like this hole has been plugged up a little bit. Maybe the rain or some other kind of critter or something. And instead of trying to move dirt out of it to reopen the hole. All right, it looks like they're taking off this way. I'm gonna go follow this one. Well now, try not to step on them. Look at what we have here. This is a big space right here. This is right in the middle of the walkway. These ants are crazy, son. I'm gonna kneel down now. This is a huge crater right here that they've made. And it's nice and windy. This one's, this one's bigger than the first one we found. But I guess some water or something, maybe a jogger came through with a water bottle, but they're trying to drink water right here. And I don't even know what number colony this is. It's like one, two, 
three to the four. Red harvester ants bringing seeds through they dough. Cause it ain't nothing but an ant thing, baby. baby. No if, ants, buts, or maybe. Baby. Climbing all on my boots, stay crazy. Baby. Cause they work all day, they never lazy. Baby. Uh. All these ants that I've been following, this long trail here, this is their buffet right here. All these plants, all these plants here are seeds. And this is their primary food So This is what they're gathering. All these seeds here, there's so many different types. There's little grass spurs. They're the ones that are literal spurs. They have sharp thorns on it. They adhere to animals. That's how their seeds disperse. This whole field is full of seeds. My goodness, what a buffet. So you might be wondering, how do these ants know where they're going? How do they know where the food is? So this is how it works. Each colony has zones. They have either three to eight zones, depending on the size of the colony. And they'll only use certain zones per day. They have patroller ants who get up early in the morning. They get up probably like before 7 a.m. So that's super early. And they go out here and they patrol the area looking for the best places to find food for that particular day. Right after that, the worker ants will wake up. They'll wake up and they'll say, okay, let's go get the food now. So the thousands of worker ants will go out and they'll follow that trail all the way to the spot. They're out there for about 20 to 30 minutes and they'll only go to the spot that's already marked. So they're just not out here wandering aimlessly. They know exactly where to go. Some of them are even carrying legs of insects because not only do they eat seeds, they also have a taste for small insects, you know, like ticks, spiders, beetles, worms. They'll even eat other ants. All right, you see this going along, this loose dirt trail that the ants love? It's their worst nightmare. The ant lion. Ant lion. And no, I didn't just make that up. All these little pits, these look like little sarlacc pits. And there's about 20 of them here. What they do is they wait on ants to come through like the trail here. And the ant will fall in there. And the little ant lion, he'll keep throwing up dirt to make the ant fall down. These little ant lions, these are larvae of a, a critter called a lacewing, an ant lion lacewing. There's a green lacewing that you see at night. And then there's the antlion lacewing. And people will a lot of times mistake them for dragonflies or damselflies, but they fly around at night as well. And they only live a few days, so you never really see them much. But they lay their eggs in loose dirt right here. And uh, they get their name because they're very fierce. I'll see if I can dig one out. And so you can see it. You know, that little ant lion is, you know, it's real ugly. It's got like this shell, and it's got these two little mandibles that, that it uses to grab prey. Uh, most of the time it's ants. All right, gonna put him right down here. He's gonna go off. There he is right here. Look at him. Going under the dirt. You know, these red harvester ants, they have uh, other predators other than the ant lion. They also get picked off by different types of birds, frogs, toads, uh, dragonflies even. You know what else? Wasp. Now, their biggest natural predator is the horned lizard, also known as the horny toad. They eat about maybe 60 of them per day. <laughs> That's their primary food source. So the red harvester ant has to watch out for them. Another big impact on the red harvester ant are these fire ants. What they do is they'll build their colonies within the range of the red harvester ants colony. It's a huge competition for food. They will take all the food away from the red harvester ant, thus starving them out. So it's bad for the red harvester ant. Now, I noticed there's a different type. There's like maybe three different types of ants down here. I see these little sugar ants, these tiny little ones. I'm not sure, are they some type of black ant? And then there's this giant, and it looks like a black carpenter ant. Let's check one of these out. Black carpenter ant. Like most carpenter ants, 
They have a sweet tooth. Now these got a black head and a black booty. These are really big, but they'll take the aphids up, any plant like this, and they'll put the aphids where they want them, and the aphids will suck the nutrients from the plant and produce a, a honeydew. And these carpenter ants love it. There's thousands of them in the colonies, and they're all different sizes, unlike the red ants. They're all the same size. But with these guys, the queens are huge, maybe like 17 millimeters or so, and they have wings. And then the males are half the size. The males vary in different sizes. The workers are really, really big. And when they work, they make a click sound, like <coughs> That's the sound that they make, you know, when they're doing their carpentry. But these guys can go 100 yards out looking for sweets. Hey, black carpenter ant, y'all. And I think I feel like drawing. Good people showing together for an artist moment. So let us start with the head. And you know it's just a circle. All right. And let's draw a thorax. And now you got another circle. Well, let's make the abdomen. Mm. Now connect it with a nose. One, two, three, go. All right. And now it's going to need an eye and an antenna. Three circles for the legs. Now let's draw the front leg. Three circles for the legs. Middle leg on the way. Go ahead. Go on. Now draw the last leg. Well, it's a big back leg. Yes, sir. With the same three parts. Close it out with some lines. All right. Don't forget it's mandible. I know that's right. Now you have a black carpenter ant. Put that on your refrigerator. That was pretty cool back there, finding those ants and ant lions. I never thought I'd see the big black carpenter ant. I would like to find the colony though, but I mean, they make their colonies a hundred yards, so they could be anywhere. They could be right here. They could be over there. But since I'm going that way, I might see him. Here are a few things that you should know about ants as well. Ants do not have lungs. They breathe through tiny holes on the sides of their bodies called spiracles that pump oxygen when they move. Are ants dangerous? The red harvester ant has a very painful venom sting that can seriously affect those who are allergic. I urge you to use proper caution when around the red harvester ant, or any ant for that matter. You know, another interesting thing that I'd like to share with you guys is that every red harvester ant that I showed you today, every single one of them was female. That's right, all ladies, they're all sisters out there getting seeds. There's only a few males and the males have wings. Their only purpose is to come out mate and then die. Sorry, fellas, that's what happens. During springtime, it'll be a good rain. The males will come out and then there'll be a few females with wings and they'll fly around and swarm and they'll meet each other and they'll mate. And they'll go into the ground and start another colony and then the male will just die. And the female will become a queen and she'll start just laying eggs, thousands and thousands of eggs over the next 15 to 20 years. That's how long the colony can live, 15 to 20 years, and that she's just a queen, so she has one job. She never leaves. She just stays there and lays eggs, so shout out to all the sisters out there. Well said, adventurer, and well done, sisters. So that was the ant adventure with the red harvester ants and all the others. Thank you guys for joining me on this adventure. It was great. These ants were great to work with. Now I'm going to let them continue making their way back to do whatever they do. And I hope to see you guys on the next one. This is your adventure artist, AJ Moore, saying good night, and I'll see y'all next time. This is nature, y'all.
So thanks for watching the video, you guys. But if you could, drop a like, a comment, and please subscribe. And it helps me make some more videos for you guys. I'm gonna get out of here because I ain't trying to get bit. <laughs>